the model makers on Thunderbirds were absolute geniuses at building miniature aeroplanes. Oh, yeah. Miniature craft of all sorts. But yep. did you know that they made some planes that could actually fly? Well, unlike Thunderbird 2. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm, uh, now, yeah. In Thunderbird 6, the yeah. Thunderbirds movie from 1968, in addition to the life-sized Tiger Moth aircraft, sorry if that is a spoiler for those who haven't seen Thunderbird 6, there were several radio-controlled models that were employed to get additional angles of the incredible aerial stunts from that film. Mm -hmm. This became essential after filming of the life-size plane became impossible due to legal complications. You can right. see a previous fab fact for details yes. there. Yes. But normal run-of-the-mill radio-controlled aircraft were not enough for Ray Brown, a Thunderbirds model maker best known for his work on the mole. Mm -hmm. Clearly gifted at the mechanical side of model making, Ray was credited by Derek Meddings in a 1984 interview with coming up with a model aeroplane with a working jet engine. Oh! <laughs> a wow. jet engine, no less. Yeah. So this model was an experiment, uh, no doubt conducted in off hours or between series, and it was never intended to appear on screen unless the tests proved successful, in mm. which case the special effects artists were hoping to convince the writers to add it into a script. So witnesses claimed it had a five-foot wingspan oh. and was designed to fly at 100 miles per hour cool. at altitudes as high as 20,000 feet. Wowzers. Yeah. That's uh, pretty good. I know. So, so it's a plane, basically. It, well, a, a, yes, but a small plane. <laughs> um, so uh, Derek alleged that a pair of twin engines uh, that could actually suck in air were mounted and the team gathered for a test flight. Mm. Unfortunately, oh. the model didn't fare too well, uh, and reports vary between it didn't fly very far and it didn't get off the ground at all. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, okay. Right. Yeah. A uh, bit of a letdown. Now, but this was probably best because the fully functional high-speed miniature jet might have made filming more complicated rather than less, I suspect. Yeah, but true. nevertheless, it just proves uh, how committed the AP Films and Century 21 team were in their quest of getting the ideal, perfect realism in miniatures. Yes. <laughs> the yes. failed miniature jet engine experiment. That's right. <laughs> what a shame. Yeah, bless them, though. Bless them for trying. Yeah. Amazing. I don't think any photos exist of this thing, but if uh, if you know otherwise, Potsdams, do email yeah. us podcast at and yeah. do you know of any other working miniatures or other similarly adapted for real life objects that uh, we used in the production of Thunderbirds mm. or any other show? Let us know, podcast at jerryanson.com. Nice. I like it. <laughs> So it's only a matter of time before they produce working miniature Jamie and Richards for the podcast, doesn't it? Well, it might give us a little break. It might do, might do. Yes. And our podcasts as well. Yes, uh, true. Yes, so there you go. Uh, Never. Great, great work from Ray Brown with, with his failed miniature jet. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure we'll have some other bizarre and equally fascinating fab facts in the future. But for this week, that is the end of this week's... Failed Fact! Oh. <laughs> 